Good morning and welcome to ESL Revolution, everyone. I am your content creator and professor, Dr. B. Welcome back to the channel. It's been a while since I have put a video out for the the uh, English side of the channel in terms of, uh, you know, uh, different topics and things like that that come up either in class or, uh, you know, just kind of reflection videos. I did post a video this morning. Uh, I'll put a link up right there to my thoughts on the issue of George Floyd and his death at the hands of the Minneapolis police. If you haven't seen that, I would recommend uh, taking a look at that. Um, yeah, that's all I will say. I'll let the video speak for itself. Um, today I want to uh, put together, uh, oh, first of all, let me explain why I haven't been uh, putting videos out recently. Um, Time-wise, it's just been a, <clears throat> a busy time for me. Um, I have been working on uh, some online coursework with uh, Google Education, uh, as well as <clears throat> the uh, Screencastify uh, program, which you'll actually see a link right there <laughs> um, in the corner that is my new digital badge and it's a way for me to tell you that I've done some completion work on my digital learning and the skills that I can bring uh, to future classrooms uh, in the uh, in the English environment in the teaching environment so I've I'm working right now on the level one uh, the level one uh, uh, Google Education Classroom in terms of the, the integration of the various Google programs into the, uh, into, the um, uh, into the world of education and how, how I can use those tools that already exist to help uh, me teach better and also as students how you can uh, engage the material uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit better. So that's uh, that's what I've been doing. Um, I'm doing little bits and pieces of that, uh, so it is taking up uh, some of my time uh, that way. But uh, yeah, today video, why not? Um, and in fact, this uh, this video is a topic that I've actually been reflecting on for some time. In fact, uh, going back probably to to uh, about October of 2019, and this has really started the whole process of my evolution in in the teaching program and how I'm beginning to shift uh, away from more a traditional model of teaching and using things like PBL or problem based learning in the classroom. Now, let me caveat that by saying one thing. The COVID lockdown of the classroom starting at the end of February, and of course no classes as you well know, uh, in March and has been going on for the entire semester, um, has actually led me to pull back a little bit from some of the, some of the things that I wanted to do. Um, simply because I was not yet comfortable as the teacher to be putting some of those things out in a completely new format, online learning. So I kind of went back a little bit to my old style of teaching for the online education uh, that we've been doing. and. I felt like I needed to do that. I felt like because the situation was was um, was so stressful, not only for me as a teacher, but for you as students, I felt like me trying to do something that had not that I had not tried yet, I felt like I would not be able to do the best job that I could for you. And so it's my hope that if we are back in class in September, that I will be able to use some of these tools more effectively 
uh, in order to create a better classroom experience for you. So with that being said, uh, and that honest criticism of myself in this, um, I want to talk about uh, something that I think has come out of the COVID experience uh, that relates to the brick and mortar classroom, the, the actual physical classroom that we will hopefully be going into in September. And that is the idea of a hybrid classroom. Now, one of the things that I have realized that is of particular advantage is using tools like Google Classroom, for example, which is something that I came to a little bit late, but better late than never, in terms of my own classrooms this year, and how that has enabled me to upload the nuts and bolts of a particular discussion that I want to have with the class and then give more time in class to the discussion of that. Uh, so to use an example, uh, the videos that I've produced on uh, the individual presentation, let's say, um, allowed me to focus to, to t talk a little bit about that in the actual class time, but then be able to let that aside. Students responsibility to go and check out those videos, ask questions if they need to, and then uh, deal with the actual conversation from the textbook in the classroom. So that's part of, of what I think this, uh, this uh, COVID experience has taught me. Now, of course, this also leads me to, to the, the thought of, well, what can I do then when we go back into the classroom to carry the best of what the online environment was and take the best of what the classroom environment is and turn that into a hybrid classroom, uh, a, a hybrid classroom uh, as as we will talk about today. So that's what I want to bring about uh, in this discussion is, is what, what is a, a hybrid classroom and how does it relate to the future of our teaching? Now, again, I've, I've talked about this before, but I'm, gonna, I'm going to put this out there for you to, to understand. And this goes to any of the teachers that are out there, but also to the students as well that in 2024, uh, which is not very far from now, actually, we're only, I mean, we're at 2020, halfway through 2020. So basically in about three and a half years, um, because of the population decline uh, in, uh, and the birth rate decline in Korea, which is substantially bad, by 2024, there will be 156,000 less university students in the country. And that bodes significant issue for us as teachers who are on contract basis, um, as well as, of course, for the school environment itself. So my hope, and I've said this before, my hope is that I can begin to shift my chain, uh, shift my classrooms around to meet the needs of the students in a better way and to put out uh, a better, a better style of classroom so that over the next few years, I will be able to practice those skills uh, more directly and give you a better experience so that Hopefully, by the time 2024 comes around, the, the tools that I will have practiced will allow me to carry on those tools and those, uh, those uh, educational styles in a better way uh, once the student uh, enrollment has perhaps declined a little bit. So that's, that's, my, that's my hope as to why I'm doing that. So let's talk about this issue of the, the hybrid classroom. Now, uh, 
the best analogy that I can think of is is this. Um, to to help explain what the hybrid classroom is, let's let's talk about what a hybrid car is, for example. Now, a hybrid car takes uh, takes the the internal combustion engine and attaches an electric motor to that engine and brings those two separate powertrains together in one format. So you have the best of the electric type vehicle uh, and the best of the internal combustion engine that brings those two things together. And what does that actually do? Well, it provides more power for the car, for example, uh, without necessarily using as much gasoline or more gasoline. Um, it also provides a, a period of time where you don't need to use the internal combustion at all, which is very good perhaps for driving around the city. So you're reducing the carbon footprint of your driving. So that's a good thing, right? So that would be a way of providing an analogy to what the hybrid classroom is. Uh, so let me just talk a little bit more about that for you. The hybrid classroom takes the best of the traditional classroom. Okay, so we think of, we think of the environment where students are learning. Uh, perhaps there are certain things in the classroom that the teacher teaches. The students might take notes on those things, maybe does some group work on those particular things. And then on the flip side, we have the best of the online type classroom, which is what we are doing right now, right? Because of COVID-19. And so we take the best of those two things and put them together in the traditional brick and mortar classroom. Uh, so we are assuming that the hybrid classroom will function uh, in, uh, in an actual classroom, right? So we are taking the, be the, the best part of the traditional classroom by being in class and taking the best of the online learning and then bringing that into the online, uh, the, the offline classroom, I should say. And so uh, let, me just, let me just read this comment here because I think it's an important one and I'll put a link to this article here. Um, Hybrid classes offer students great alternative to traditional classes or online classes, okay? So instead of doing one or the other, you do both and try to do it as best as you can. As a balance between traditional and online learning, hybrid classes offer a number of unique benefits that you wouldn't get with other course structures. Okay, so the core structures are the general lecture style format that you would get perhaps in a classroom, and then you get the online learning type uh, situation. So uh, what you end up doing, what you end up doing is you present the content of the textbook, the content of the lecture as a video lecture. Okay, so I would, um, in order to introduce the topic, what I would do is maybe a short, quick 10 minute video to introduce general content and themes to you as students. You as students would then watch the video, okay? When we come back to the classroom, there would be, perhaps I would use a PBL format, problem-based learning format, to help accentuate what it is that that video actually talked about. So your homework then it would be to watch that video and perhaps do a little quick uh, video quiz to make sure that you understand the material that I've presented. Then we come back into the class and again, I do a follow-up conversation. Perhaps I ask you a couple of questions to make sure that I know that you are um, that you are uh, that you've watched the video. Then I would provide you with some uh, breakout rooms, to use that term, uh, a breakout scenario where I put you into 
uh, a group and I give you a problem related to that, to the topic that we are discussing in the classroom. So instead of focusing on the, the textbook itself and offering that lecture right away in the classroom, the lecture has already been done, the, note, the notices have already been done, the basic information has already been covered, and we get right back into uh, the, the, the discussion format of, of the class. And those discussions can take place in various formats, various ways. Um, so you can go back, you can, you can go back and re-watch the video if you need, if there's something that you haven't, mi if you've missed, or perhaps a concept that I talk about that you don't understand, maybe right in the middle of class. You're like, wow, okay, so the professor talked about, but I don't really understand that. So let's go back, let's watch the video again as a group and figure out what that means. Then we could have a talk about that, right? So what that also means is uh, there's more face-to-face, -face, uh, more face-to-face -face within the classroom. So this would give me more time as a teacher to go around to the various groups and actually directly ask you as a group or as students, what do you think about this? What kind of problems are coming up? How can we manage that problem? How can we change our perspective on X in order to uh, come up with a solution of Y? Okay, so that's something that this hybrid, uh, this hybrid format uh, can, can help us. Uh, it, it goes on to say, with lecture out of the way, face-to-face uh, -face class time can be used more constructively for the kinds of activities that can't take place through the online component of the class. Students have more time to ask questions about topics that are confusing, and professors are able to lead more in-depth discussions. Students will also have some opportunity to actually meet and work alongside their peers, asking questions, sharing information. Classes can be more focused when you're not required to cover everything in a given amount of time. And that's one of the key things. Those online little vignettes that I would be recording would allow for us to get into topics more so, uh, to, to, to get a little bit more in depth in the topic as an actual conversation and you would then just watch the preliminary uh, layout or the preliminary information uh, uh, by video to give us more uh, chance to be talking in class. Um, so it's more work for me as a teacher, I think, uh, as I've noticed that these online classes typically are, there's a little bit more prep work for me to go through and do. But I think the payoff in the long run for you as students would be a lot, uh, a lot more enticing. Um, <clears throat> it also means, so it's a little bit more work on my end, but also I think it's a little bit more, it provides a little bit more responsibility for you as students and more commitment to the process. It means that you're gonna have to go into Google Classroom every day and, uh, or every week and watch those videos. It's gonna mean that you're gonna have to take a little pop quiz at the end of that video to make, for me to make sure that you know what you're talking about and that you understand the content of that video. Um, it means that you're gonna have more commitment in the classroom to be aware of the topic and to be willing to talk about it. Because if you're not talking in the classroom, well, it's a conversation class, you should be doing that anyway, right? So this is part of the, the, the change that I'm considering once we get into September. Now, this also means for the, let's say, hypothetically, <clears throat> let's say um, the option to go back to class does not happen. So in September, we are still doing online classes. So what this means for me, if I'm going to do a hybrid class, is to actually produce the video before the class. You go in and watch the video online through Google Classrooms, then we have a Zoom type meeting to talk about what it is that we've engaged with in terms of the textbook. 
So it would be another way of characterizing that responsibility on your part to do more of the, the prep work and yet come back uh, and have that discussion, perhaps in your breakout rooms, perhaps in class, and open that conversation up a lot more, okay? So that's what, that's what hybrid classroom is. That's where I think, if I could kind of give my two cents to the matter, that's where I think the, the lesson of the COVID classroom, for me, that's what I've learned that there are definite benefits to the online classroom and yet there are definite benefits to the in-class class in the in the in the traditional brick and mortar classroom and so bringing those two bringing the best things of those together and putting them in a space for us to learn and teach i think will be an extremely valuable a tool also as I'm reflecting on this, the idea of a the idea of a hybrid presentation will also be a very unique thing because that means you as your as an individual presentation, let's say, well, you record your individual presentation up on the Google Classroom, you put that there. We as students then watch that individual presentation online and then you facilitate a discussion with the class on that topic. Mm. Now that would be an interesting way of bringing about an example of use, uh, utilizing the hybrid classroom for an actual presentation. Mm, I'm going to try to remember that one. Um, that won't be till next year, so don't worry, or next semester, so don't worry about that. But, um, so yeah, so this is what the hybrid classroom is, and this is what it, where I think we might be uh, required to take our classrooms in September of 2020, if we actually go back to class. And if we don't, then the hybrid classroom can be another effective tool for us, to, uh, for us to teach our students. So on that note, I want to say thank you very much. Remember, it is the weekend almost. It's Friday right now. Please wear your masks when you go outside. Flatten the curve right away. Let's get rid of COVID in Korea. Let's get back into the classroom, enjoy our time together. And remember, be the revolution, everyone. I will see you later. Have a great weekend. Peace.